Christmas is a time for celebration, getting together, and gift giving, but unfortunately, your humble DJ Atomic Wolf just got a letter from Krampus that blows any sack of coal out of the water. For some years now, many of you have been very connected to my very own fan-made Fallout Radio web station, A-Bomb Radio, and if you've been following me on any platform whatsoever and still found a way to crawl under a rock, A-Bomb Radio is still really the ultimate station for oldies and retro music. Yes, it has big band, swing, country, doo-wop, and pretty much anything between the 1920s and the early 1960s. It sports a playlist that makes sure to frequently play the famous sounds of Fallout amid a library of hundreds and hundreds of other songs. And let's not forget those custom Three Dog promos and civil defense commercials from the 1950s to add a touch of flavor. You know a wastelander who doesn't have A-Bomb Radio on their pit boy Come on, you have a duty to uphold. Look here, if the sound of over 500 non-stop tunes doesn't wow you, you're probably already dead. ABR, stay tuned, we're spinning truth and music. So bare your teeth because this is the bad news. Me and perhaps thousands of others all received a newsletter from the Toronto Cast Streaming Service, the streaming service that allows us to stream all of our music. The message is pretty clearly stated that the organization Sound Exchange part of the Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA, told Toronto Cast that it was in violation of copyright laws involving royalties. They told them that they either needed to pay up or geoblock the United States from using their services. They chose to block. So what does this mean? It simply means that nobody in the United States can listen to me or anyone's web station under the Toronto Cast provider via January 12th. So Atomic, why can't you just hop to another provider? Well, the thing is, dear listeners, that I just about jumped to every ship there was to keep A-Bomb Radio afloat, but each one of those services either ended up having severe problems or having this exact same thing happen to them. TorontoCast has so far been the most professional provider out of the last three I've used, so even then I probably won't find another with the same features and customer service. It's no secret that the US's licensing and music laws are tighter than most, and they end up catching up to these streaming providers one way or another. In fact, I left my first ever provider for just the same reason. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. I never really talked about my long and confusing struggle with my station's technical side, because it was frankly long and confusing to understand. Even today, I have people scratching their heads when I tell them the music doesn't come from the app, but rather it's streamed to the app by providers like TorontoCast instead. All I ever cared about was getting the music to you. There was really no need to bore you with that side of the spectrum. So before I move on, here's Toronto Cast's official message. Hi everyone. First of all, there was some confusion this week about a posted message on Facebook where it was said that Toronto Cast was shutting down on December 31st, 2018. This post was picked up quite fast and as a result, we've seen some weird things appear. Well, take out your party hats because we are not going to seize operations. In 2019, we're gonna kick ass and chew bubblegum like Toronto Cast has been doing since day one. We do have some bad news concerning American listeners. We received a message from Sound Exchange. Sound Exchange is a non-profit collective rights management organization. It is the sole organization designed by the US Congress to collect and distribute digital performance royalties for sound recordings. The message made it clear to us that we can't broadcast to people in the USA unless we have a license from them. They gave us two options, getting a license, geoblock the United States. We have chosen to geoblock the United States for now starting on January 12th, 2019. This wasn't an easy decision, and we know some of you will take a listener's hit. We are exploring several options to see what can be done regarding the United States, sound exchange, and possible options, the Toronto Cast development team. So a lot of legal jibber jabber, but you get the picture. So now we're left with what to do with A-Bomb Radio as a station. Thing is, I don't think it can thrive as a station much anymore, as in live. That's the unfortunate truth. It would have to depend on another provider, and I just explained what could happen with that. So after a few chats with other concerned listeners, the very least we could come up with is a Spotify playlist dedicated to ABR. Seems like the easiest and safest way to go about things, and I know a lot of you have long requested a way to listen to my music on demand. So I ask you, would something along those lines be an acceptable alternative? 
Judging by the station's popularity over the years, I doubt anyone would like to see it go. As I say this, A-Bomb Radio has gained a hefty 106,687 app downloads across the board. With its 4.1 out of 5 star rating on its most popular platform Android, and a 4.9 on iOS, I bet a lot of anger and confusion could arise once January 12th comes. But this isn't to in any way disregard my listeners from out of the country, since this upcoming change is only going to affect US listeners. The only thing is, US listeners make up almost 50% of ABR's audience, while Germany comes in second. We have to remember here, even after this new policy goes into effect, I'll still have to be paying for the stream to stay alive. A stream that not even I will be able to tune into. So I'm not saying I'll pull the plug completely just yet, I'll just need to see how things go after the 12th. Again, Wastelanders, I'm really sorry to break this news in such a joyous time, but I felt it would be the only right way to tell you before I had to explain things after the new policy took over. Don't totally lose help, my friends. There's always a chance Toronto cast and the RIAA could work things out before time runs out. Then there's the Spotify Plan B I'm currently considering. Either way, I still think there's a way A-Bomb Radio could still shimmy its way out of this jam in the end. And before I forget, I can't express how thankful I am for the truckloads of reviews I get both publicly and personally from listeners. Fallout fans and old music fans alike can't seem to express enough of their gratitude towards the station, or even just regular people who stumbled across it and fell in love instantly. People have told me they listen to A-Bomb Radio while they clean the house, drive to work or school, when they play it in their shops, or even just any time they feel like listening. Some of the most common comments I get from Fallout players are when they use ABR as an alternative to the preset radio stations on their pit boys to enhance the experience. It's just little things like that that brighten up my day and make me proud of what I put together. A-Bomb Radio, that was first dubbed Radio Wasteland, then Old World Tunes, and now its current name, was started in late 2014, and I hope we can keep this station thriving in some form of way after this unfortunate headline. Stay subscribed and click that notification bell because I will be keeping us updated on this story. Stay safe this Christmas and have a happy new year.